Hello everyone. Well, I'm out actually testing out my portable setup here and I am imaging currently M8, which is Lagoon Nebula. And I've also, in my same field of view, I've got the Trifid Nebula, which is M20 and there's a cluster M21 right above it that I'm also getting. And I've got a couple other globular clusters down below the Lagoon Nebula because I'm using such a wide field of view. Well, it's not a, it's, it's a camera lens. It's my 200 millimeter camera lens, which I'm going to show you this, the whole setup in the daytime. You know, it's kind of goofy trying to do this, showing people stuff at nighttime, but here it is. Hi everybody. Can you see me in here? It's actually a couple weeks later because I went on vacation shortly after I collected that image, that data, and I wanted to process the image so I can show you at the end of this video. So I'll real quickly go through the my setup, and I'm going through it real quickly because I already have done another video on this, so uh, you can watch that other video, which I'll provide a link for as well. Anyways, up in the top, I had my... ZWO guiding system, which consists of the ZWO 120 attached to the ZWO mini guide scope. And I have my ASI 2600 MC. I have the ZWO filter drawer, and that was my uh, NBZ, the IDAS NBZ filter on there. I have the Canon 200 millimeter USM f 2.8 lens and I have an ADM ring and an ADM dovetail bar and that's the whole imaging system. Next, excuse me, I have the Ioptron Skyguider Pro and one thing different, I have the this bracket, I have it reversed from when I was imaging that other night and the reason I have it reversed now is because you see this screw right here, this holds the bracket onto the Skyguider Pro. But when I have it in the other orientation, that screw would be at the top. And that would actually interfere with these screws, which make the, which controls the, RA or the declination direction. Okay, what else is uh, attached to this? Oh, I should also mention that I, these are the step down rings because the Canon lens is uh, set at f2.8. It's open right now, but I use the step down rings rather than using the aperture uh, controller uh, from the lens because these give much better stars. And also, here is my dew shield, or dew, dew strap, and I actually did not use it that night. That uh, night was so clear and so dry that I didn't, I didn't hook it up. I brought it with me just in case I needed it, but I didn't need it at all. It actually, this, this one actually has a little USB con, um, connector, which I'll show you where I would connect that into. I would actually connect right into the ASI or Pro. Uh, AI Sarah Plus, that's what I'm using for to control this system. All right, let me go down a little bit lower and show you some other stuff. Okay, I'm slightly lower now, and I just wanted to show you what I got to connect it up to. This here is the Williams Optics base, and this is a much better base than comes with the Skyguider Pro. The Skyguider Pro gives you one, but it's uh, the, the, the knobs to control, to do polar alignment are not nearly as good as this. Okay, really low, I've got my Pegasus Pocket Power Box, and attached to that I have the, with Velcro, I have my uh, Sky Guy, or my ASI Air Plus, and I have that all attached to, to the, the tripod leg with Velcro, and it's pretty solid on here, so I kind of like that. Now, what am I using to power this whole thing? Well, 
I'm using this thing. This is uh, very, very, very compact. It's the Maxox K2 computer power supply. And it has a 12 volt and a 20 volt output. And it also has some USB ports if I needed. And this thing ran the ASI Air as well as the camera. And I, I used it for a couple hours and I still had plenty of power, barely touched it. So this will run everything for the entire night, my whole setup. Now the Skygotter Pro has its own power source, so I don't even need uh, this. It doesn't even need to power the the ASI or, or the Skyguider Pro because, as I said, that that you power up separately, and that had enough power to run through the whole night. So this system is really, really, really compact. It's good enough to put on a plane as well. That's how portable this system is. Okay, let's go back uh, to the to that night, and then I'll have a few closing words. Okay, this is what I'm imaging right now. This is the, there's a lagoon, there's a triffid, and here's that M21 that I was talking about, that little cluster. And there's a couple globulars down here that are also uh, in this field of view. And the image looks better on the screen than it, that I'm showing you. You'll see the, the final image when it's done. I'm taking two minute exposures and I'm picking up a lot of data. I'm using the IDAS NBZ filter on here. The reason I'm using and the NBZ filter is down low. This is a low-lying object for me. And to the south, uh, there's all sorts of light pollution. That's where Bridgeport, New York City, and all the rest of it is. So if I tried to do a a non-filtered image, I'm, I think it would be a, a lot. There'd be a lot more noise in it for one thing. Okay. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm really, really impressed with this system. It's very portable. I used the polar alignment function with the ASR Pro using this system. The only thing I haven't tried yet is the plate solving function, which I could have done. I had some trouble finding the object because I was doing everything by hand. But even though this is not a go-to mount, you can still use plate solving with it. But I haven't tested that out yet, so that's next. But otherwise, everything on here I've, I've tested out and it works really well. Hope you like my, my image at the end. And um, I'm sorry about all the tongue twisting I do, but... Anyways, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.